Shabbat Shalom. Good morning, good afternoon. Welcome to Open Temple's virtual yoga studio. My name is Zach Lasker. Um, in addition to being the executive director, I have the humbling honor of being our resident yoga instructor. It's good to see many familiar faces and a couple of new ones. So if this is your first time in our yoga space, welcome. Um, a disclaimer as always, you need to be the master, the guide of your own practice. I am here to offer a sequence, to make suggestions, to offer modifications and variations, but you need to make intelligent decisions that serve you well. And I always like to think of this line in the sand. On the one uh, side is a little bit of heat and discomfort, which can be good and healthy. And on the other side is that area of pain. Back off. Don't go into that, that section. So if you feel that you're pushing out of heat and discomfort and into pain, please back off. Come into one of the previous poses or um, accept one of the modifications that I will offer along the way. That's the big disclaimer. In terms of context, this is a pretty unique virtual yoga studio. We are gonna flow through an asana, a physical practice, but it's going to be guided by the Jewish wisdom of Musar. Musar is an idea that we each have access to an ethical path. And along the way, along our journey, we pick up various soul traits that we have the opportunity to embody. And in a mindful manner, we focus our attention on one soul trait at a time. And that's exactly what we've been doing in this weekly class. We looked at soul traits like patience and humility and generosity and order, equanimity, truth. Last week, we did a yoga practice looking at moderation. And today we have arrived at the soul trait of loving kindness. In Hebrew, the word that we use for loving kindness is chesed. And in Sanskrit, in the philosophy and tradition of yoga, there is an idea known as metta. Metta is also a version of loving kindness directed toward living things. And we're going to see how those ideas from Judaism and yoga show up in our practice today. With that backdrop, we're going to start with a chest opener. That's going to be a recurring theme throughout our practice. And there are so many options for how you can do this. Um, first of all, if you'd like to do it just with a pillow, lay your pillow on your mat the long way towards the back. Start with your hips just at the end where your tush is of the pillow and you can, with your knees bent and feet on the floor, arms extended, you can start to lie back. Let your arms fall alongside your torso, straighten your legs, lower your head. This will be a very light chest opener. That's one option. Option number two is to use your books or blocks. And the secret to this is the lower your blocks, the lighter the chest opener will be, the higher the blocks, the more intense. You can also choose to have your um, blocks at different levels. So let me show you one version of this, is to have your block on the medium level. This is the low level, medium level, high level. I really suggest at the start of practice that you don't go with the high level at least for the lower block. So I'm gonna set them up the same height on the medium level, spaced out from each other. Just like with the folks who are using the pillows, I'm gonna start with my knees bent, arms extended out in front of me, and I'm gonna to start to lower onto my back. And you want that lower block to hug right into the bottom of your shoulder blades. And the upper block, the block towards the back of the mat, is a cradle for your head. Extend your legs straight, arms alongside your torso.
And if you're feeling like you want to let your inner yoga warrior just blast through and you want a more intense version, lower the block underneath your head to the lowest height. We'll take several cycles of breath. Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. Inhale. <clears throat> and exhale. Inhale, drawing in oxygen, life, energy, the fuel that will really propel you through your practice. And use the exhale as an opportunity to not only let go of your breath, but to really turn the volume down in your mind. Breathe out all of the other items on your to-do list. Breathe out the responsibilities that you carry at home, with your family, with your friends, your work, your volunteer activities. For this sacred hour and 15 minutes, let it go. It will be there waiting for you. And let's again join together in this interesting way we are relating virtually. So together, inhale through your nose. Exhale out your mouth. Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. And another inhale. And a lion's breath exhale, which means open your mouth, extend your tongue out, and push the breath out of your body. <sighs> Bend your right knee and plant your right foot on the ground. Bend your left knee and plant your left foot on the ground. And then press your forearms and elbows into the ground and lift your torso up. Remove the blocks from underneath your chest and your head and lay back down. And notice the sensations in your spine, the energy in your chest, and now inhale, draw your right knee into your chest, extend your left leg out on the mat, heel rests on the floor, toes are pointed up, your left toes are pointed up towards the ceiling. Inhale, draw your right knee closer to your right armpit and exhale. And one more inhale. And as you exhale, bend your left knee, plant your left foot on the ground, release the interlace of your hands around your right knee and lower your right foot on the ground. Second side, inhale, draw your left knee into your chest, interlace your fingers around that left knee and extend your right leg forward towards the front of the room. Stamp your right foot on the wall in front of you. 
Flex your right foot so that your toes point up towards the ceiling and rotate the inner part of your thigh down towards the ground. Really throughout this practice, also going to be emphasizing the rotation of your inner thigh down and back. And inhale, left knee comes into your left armpit and exhale. Inhale, draw that left knee closer to your left armpit while simultaneously lengthening your right leg towards the front of the room. One more inhale. And as you exhale, bend your right knee, right foot on the ground, release your left knee, left foot on the ground. Draw both knees into your chest and start to rotate your knees in a clockwise direction. And in doing so, you massage your lower back and release your spine. And after your third or fourth rotation in a clockwise direction, switch to counterclockwise. And then pause, draw your knees into your chest, lift your forehead up to your knees. And then start to rock forward and backwards, building up a little bit of momentum until you can rock up in a seated position. And today I'd like to suggest that we start in Virasana. I'm going to show you how to sit in Virasana. It's different than Sukhasana, which is a typical cross-legged pose, um, seated position. Start up on your knees, place one of your blocks or books right between your ankles, and then sit down onto the block or book. I'm gonna face you. And remember I said earlier, we're gonna be emphasizing the rotation of your inner thigh down. So take your hands, grab onto your right thigh and rotate it in, in towards the midline and down towards the ground. Take your hands, grab onto your left thigh and same thing, emphasize the rotation down, in and down. And then sit up straight, crown of your head reaches up towards the ceiling. Inhale and exhale. Place your fingertips on the ground and inhale, palms out, lift your arms up. Arms are parallel with your ears and exhale, arms come down. We're gonna do that just a couple times. Palms out, inhale, arms up. When your arms raise, your palms face in towards each other and exhale, arms down. Let's do that two more times. Inhale. When you reach the top, lengthen through all four sides of your torso and that's what's gonna lift your shoulders and arms up and exhale, arms float down. Palms out, inhale, arms up. The lengthening starts with your torso instead of with your arms. And when you lift your torso up, then your arms raise up towards the ceiling. And exhale, arms come down. Interlace your fingers behind your back. Start with a bend in your elbows. And then inhale, reach your arms towards straight. Knuckles point down towards the ground. Press your palms together. What's going to help you to really maximize this as a chest and heart opener. Draw your shoulder blades together. Spread your collarbones. Take two more cycles of breath.
And then return to have a bend in your elbows and switch the interlace of your fingers. Just move them over. And then again, same action, straighten your arms, knuckles go down and back. Draw those shoulder blades together, spread your collarbones, lift up through the crown of your head. Take another couple cycles of breath, palms press in towards each other. Opening up our chest, which is headquarters to our heart. And then return a bend to your elbow and release the interlace of your hands. Float your fingertips back down towards the ground. Going to do another set of arm extensions to work on loosening up our shoulders. Inhale, arms float up. Bend your right elbow, lower your right hand to your upper back. Use your left hand to grab onto your right elbow and hug your right elbow in towards your head. Couple more cycles of breath. And then with your next inhale, extend both arms up and exhale, arms come down. Second side, inhale, arms come up. This time, bend your left elbow, left hand floats down to your upper back. Take your right hand, grab onto that left elbow, hug the left elbow in towards your head. Three cycles of breath. And then inhale, release your left elbow, arms rise up towards the ceiling, and exhale, arms float down. Place your hands on your knees, palms facing up, and let your eyes close. In considering this soul trait of loving kindness and looking at the wisdom of our Jewish tradition, and the tradition and legacy of yoga, there is a really important intersection. The two walks of life are in agreement that in order to activate this soul trait of loving kindness, chesed, metta, part of that equation is practicing it on ourselves. And so one of the reasons why we step into a space of yoga, the physical practice, is to practice self-care, to treat ourselves, and to honor where we're at in life, and to be aware of it. I'm constantly guided by the wisdom from her kavot, in ein anili nili. I don't show up for myself, who will? There is a common meditation that I'd like to offer us as we start the practice. So repeat after me, you're welcome to say it out loud. You can repeat it in your head. This is the blessing that we offer at the start of our practice. May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be safe. May I be peaceful and at ease. May I be happy. We're going to repeat that meditation another two times. 
After me, may I be filled with loving kindness. May I be safe. May I be peaceful and at ease. May I be happy. As we enter into this third time, what are the conditions that might need to change for you to live this meditation? May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be safe. May I be peaceful and at ease. May I be happy. Press your palms together in the center of your chest. In order to be authentic and to have true follow through with this idea of loving kindness, we need to live this for ourselves. So I hope this meditation will guide you through our practice this morning. If your eyes are closed, let them flutter open. And let's come into tabletop position. So shoulders stacked above your wrists, palms pressing into the ground, spread your fingers, index fingers point towards the top of the mat. Knees are directly beneath your hips. Back is flat, spine is in its neutral position. And then inhale into a cow position, arch your back, shine your chest and heart forward, lift your tush up, and exhale, round your back into a cat position. Draw your belly into your chest, and then inhale back into cow, arch your back, shine your chest and heart forward, and exhale into cat. Round your back, draw your belly into your chest. Imagine that you could shoot your belly button up to the ceiling, and then inhale back into cow, Exhale into cat. Do that just a couple times on your own at the pace that feels right for you. And let's meet back into a tabletop. We're gonna do it one more time, this time holding each position for a few cycles of breath. So inhale into cow position. Imagine that your chest was a lighthouse and it's your responsibility to shine that light, to protect those on the sea, to protect the boats from the storm, from each other. That's how brightly you need to shine the lighthouse of your chest. And now round your back, draw your belly into your chest, a few cycles of breath in a cat, cat position. And then release, come into tabletop. And now with your hips, Staying above your knees, start to walk your arms forward. We're going to come into a puppy dog position. Bend your elbows, lower your forearms onto the ground, and lower your forehead onto the ground. So this might seem like it is child's pose, but in child's pose, your hips are on your heels. This time, keep your hips just above your knees. This is a, a subtle chest opener, back bend. Take a few cycles of breath. And now draw your big toes to touch. Lift your forearms up, walk your hands back in. And now sit your hips back on your heels, nestle your torso between your thighs. Again, release your forearms onto the ground, release your forehead onto the ground. 
and take a few cycles of breath. So as we start to consider this idea of chesed, of metta, loving kindness, Rabbi Yachnes offers a really great story. There are two people walking down the street. And let's say in this first version, they are walking together. One is holding several huge boxes. And as they start to walk, the second person says, please share those boxes, share your load with me. And they continue to walk down. And Rabbi Yachna says, is this chesed? Is this loving kindness? And his answer is no. This is just being a nice person. And Rabbi Yachna's second version of the story, the two people are walking in opposite directions, one with several large boxes, the other empty-handed. And when they meet in the middle, the person who's empty-handed said, please, let me help you. Let me lighten your load takes some of the boxes, turns around, and walks to the first person's destination. Rabbi Yachna says, this is the example of loving kindness, shifting your own direction in service of another person. Take another inhale, and exhale. Shift forward briefly through tabletop, tuck your toes, practice loving kindness on yourself. If your wrists are sensitive, you can have them up on your blocks or books and then lift your knees up, shift your hips up, straighten your legs, press your heels down towards the ground. Palms are rooted into your mat, fingers are spread and find yourself in Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. And bend your right knee, lower your left heel down towards the ground. And then inhale, come up onto your toe tips. This time as you exhale, bend your left knee and lower your right heel down towards the ground. And take a few cycles of breath where you're switching. One knee is bent and the opposite heel presses down. And then switch. And then come back into downward facing dog. Inhale, glide forward into plank position and you can modify with your knees bent and on the ground. And then exhale, press back into Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Inhale, come forward into plank position. Shoulders above your wrists, press your heels back and exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. Inhale forward into plank position. And this time as you exhale, draw your torso forward, shoulders beyond your wrists, bend your elbows and lower down through Chaturanga onto your belly. Untuck your toes and walk your hands back a few inches so that your hands are lined up with your ribs. Draw your shoulders, excuse me, draw your elbows in towards your chest and inhale, press into the palms of your hands as you reach your torso up. Shine your chest and heart forward. You're in Bhujangasana, low cobra. Draw your shoulder blades together and exhale, lower down. Great job. Gonna do that two more times. Inhale, lift your chest up, spread your collarbones, shine your chest forward, and exhale, lower down. Third time, inhale, Bhujangasana, low cobra, and exhale, lower down. Bring your arms in front of you, press your forearms into the ground. Shoulders are stacked directly above your elbows. Lift your chest and heart up, come into Sphinx position. 
Take a few cycles of breath. Draw your shoulder blades together. And so the benefit of this asana, of this physical practice, is we have an opportunity physically to open up our chest, to open up our hearts, to position ourselves to be in an outward facing and receiving position. Now we're gonna come into Ardha Bekasana, a modified half frog pose. Bend your right knee, raise your right shin up. Inhale, press into your left forearm, Lift your right arm up and back and grab on to your right ankle. Bend your right elbow and pull your right heel in towards your chest. Few cycles of breath. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale and exhale, keep your gaze down on the ground to help protect your neck. And then with your next exhale, release your right hand, slowly lower your right shin back down, right forearm comes back down onto the ground, parallel with your left forearm, you're back in Sphinx pose. Second side, inhale, bend your left knee, Lift your left shin and foot up towards the ceiling. And exhale. Inhale, lift your left arm up as you press your right forearm deeper into the ground. Grab onto your left ankle with your left hand. Pull your left heel in towards your chest. And start to rotate your left hand so that your fingertips point down and your elbow points up. Take another couple cycles of breath. And then with your next exhale, slowly release your left ankle, left shin comes down. Walk your hands back to be parallel with your ribs. Lower your forehead onto the ground and then tuck your toes and push yourself back up into plank or modified plank with your knees down and then hips up and back. Adho Mukha Shanasana, downward facing dog. Inhale. And exhale. Remember that rotation of your inner thighs. Inhale, rotate them, swivel them back towards the back of the room. And then inhale, come forward into plank. Modify if you need. Bend your elbows. Lower your chest down towards the ground through chaturanga. Untuck your toes. Stack one hand on top of the other and lower your forehead down as a pillow on top of your hands. Take a few cycles of breath. And I want to share with you the perspective on chesed, on loving kindness from our preeminent scholar of Musar, Alan Marinus, who says that chesed involves acts that sustain the other. This is a dimension of the notion that doesn't come through so clearly when all we think of is loving kindness in the Jewish view. It is not enough to hold warm thoughts in our heart or to wish each other well. So just to be nice and kind doesn't cut it with chesed, with loving kindness. Instead, we are meant to offer real sustenance to one another, and the ways in which we can do that are innumerable. We can offer money, time, resources, empathy, an open ear, manual assistance, a letter, a phone call, on and on. 
So chesed is action oriented. It's not just a smile. It's not just an empathetic nod. Let's keep that in mind as we flow through these actions. Lift your forehead up, plant your palms back into the ground by your lower ribs, elbows hug into your chest. Inhale, lift your chest and heart up. And this time, lift your feet up into Shalambhasana, locust pose. And remember that rotation of your inner thighs. Spin them up towards the ceiling. Take one more inhale. And exhale, lower your feet down, lower your forehead down. Interlace your fingers behind your back. Start with a bend in your elbows. And then inhale, lift your chest and head up. Lift your feet up and start to straighten your arms towards the back of the, the room. Knuckles pointing back. Press your palms together. This is really what's gonna help you to open up your chest and spin the rotation of your inner thighs up towards the ceiling. Take one more cycle of breath. And exhale, lower down. Let's do that one again. It's my favorite one. Inhale, lift your head and chest and heart up. Lift your feet up. Knuckles fly towards the back of the room. I always feel like this is a version of Superman, Superwoman, Superperson, Pose, you're flying through the air. And exhale, release. Bend your right knee, lift your right shin up. Bend your left knee, lift your left shin up. Release the interlace of your fingers. Reach back and at the same time, grab onto your ankles. Hug your ankles and your heels in towards your tush. And then inhale. Lift your heart and chest up. Lift your knees up. Knees draw in towards each other. And you're in Dhanurasana, a wheel pose. Two more cycles of breath. This is an extraordinary chest opener, heart opener. Totally poising you to practice chesed. And with your next exhale, lower your knees down, lower your forehead down, and release your hands from your ankles and slowly lower your shins down. We're going to do one more version of a back bend chest opener, Yogi's Choice. You can do Low Cobra, you can do Shalambhasana, you can do Dhanurasana. So, Low Cobra. Locust pose or wheel pose, you decide. Take an inhale, exhale, lift up, whichever version you're choosing. Three cycles of breath. And exhale, release down. Press your palms down into the mat. Fingertips facing forward, elbows hug into your torso, tuck your toes, lift your knees up, press yourself up back into plank, shift your hips up and back, Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog, and walk your hands back towards your feet and find yourself in Uttanasana in a forward fold. Start with a minor bend in your knees. Release the crown of your head down towards the ground. And then float your hands up to your hips. Draw your elbows in towards each other. Start to straighten your legs. 
and then slowly lift your torso up one vertebra at a time. Keep your gaze down on the ground. Standing up straight, walk to the front of your mat. Standing in Tadasana in mountain pose. We're gonna do a few versions of a half sun salutation, inserting a back bend. Inhale, arms up. Bend your upper back back towards the back of the room. That's your back bend. And then exhale, release, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, come halfway up. Exhale into Uttanasana, fold forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms come down, back into Tadasana. I'm gonna do that two more times. Inhale, arms up, bend your upper back. And exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms float up. And exhale, arms come down. One more time. I'm going to cue only the breath. Make sure you emphasize the back bend. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. Great job. Find yourself back in Tadasana in Mountain Pose. Building on into Surya Namaskar C. Inhale, arms float up. Bend your upper back. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, release forward. Bend your knees. Inhale, step your left leg back, lower onto your left knee, untuck your left toes. Inhale, lift your torso and arms up, bending into your right knee, Anjane Asana. And then as you exhale, bend your elbows, make goal posts out of your arms. Inhale to lift up through the crown of your head. And as you exhale, bend your upper back, Shine your chest and heart up towards the ceiling. And then exhale, crown of your head lifts back up. Inhale, arms straighten up. And then exhale, arms float down. Frame your front foot. Tuck your left toes. Lift your left knee up. Flatten your palms. Step your right leg back. And either take the vinyasa or come immediately into Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. Inhale, step your left foot forward, lower onto your right knee, untuck your right toes. Inhale, torso lifts up. This is our second side. Exhale, bend your elbows, make goal posts out of your arms. Inhale, lifting up through the crown of your head and bending your upper back. Inhale, crown of your head comes up and exhale. Inhale, straighten your arms up as you bend deeper into your left knee and exhale, hands come down, frame your front foot, tuck your right toes, right knee lifts up, step your right foot up to meet your left foot, Find yourself in Uttanasana, a forward fold. Inhale, back flattens, halfway up into Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, floating down, Uttanasana. Inhale, root into your feet, Uttita Hastasana. Arms float up towards the ceiling. And exhale, arms come down. Great job, building on.
Inhale, arms float up. Take the back bend. Exhale, folding forward into Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, flatten your back halfway up. Exhale, Uttanasana. Bend your elbows, flatten your palms. This time, inhale, step your right leg back first. Right knee comes down. Untuck your right toes. Inhale, arms lift up. Exhale, lower your hands down, interlace your fingers, press your palms into your lower thigh just above your left knee, press your left knee forward, straighten up through the crown of your head. And then lower your right hand onto the ground. Bend your right knee, right shin floats up. Lift your left arm up and back and grab onto your right ankle and draw your right heel in towards your tush. And rotate your chest out to the left. Take a couple cycles of breath. Inhale. And exhale, bend deeper into your left knee. Draw your left hip back and in. And then with your next exhale, slowly release your right ankle down towards the ground. Left arm comes up and down to frame your left foot. Tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up. Step your left leg back to meet your right leg, and you can either take the vinyasa or meet in Adha Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. And second side. Inhale, step your right foot forward, lower your left knee onto the ground, untuck your left toes, inhale, Lift your torso and arms up, bend deeper into your right knee. Exhale, lower your hands, interlace your fingers, press your palms into your lower right thigh, just above your right knee. Pressing your right knee forward, lifting up through the crown of your head. Take another cycle of breath. And then release the interlace of your fingers, Lower your left hand down to the mat, bend your left knee, lift your left shin up, right hand floats up to the ceiling and back to grab onto your left ankle, hug your left heel into your chest and with your left palm pressing into the mat, start to rotate your chest open to the right side of the room, bending deeper into your right knee, so this is a subtle chest opener with a quad stretch. Take another couple cycles of breath. And release your left ankle, left shin comes down, right hand comes down to frame your right foot. Tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up, step your left foot forward to meet your right foot. You're in Uttanasana. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, root into your feet. Utita Hastasana, torso and arms lift up. And exhale, arms come down, Tadasana. Pause for a moment in Tadasana. So this idea of working on our soul traits means that there's work involved, there's effort, and there's an acknowledgement that when it comes to loving kindness, chesed and metta, there is an inclination of resistance in our bodies, in our minds, and sometimes in our souls. 
And our spiritual challenge and our physical challenge is to push forward from that resistance to really open up our chests and heart. Like I said at the start of class, we don't cross over into the threshold of pain. Ahimsa, violence or nonviolence is sacred, but a little bit of heat in expressing chesed and opening up our hearts is a good thing. So keep that in mind as we flow through the next series of poses. So standing in Tadasana, inhale, step your left leg back, angle your left foot in about 45 degrees with your hands on your hips, rotate your hips towards the front of the room, heel toe your right foot in towards the center of the mat so that your right heel is aligned with the arch of your back foot. And then inhale, bend into your right knee, lower your thigh down towards the ground. And then inhale, windmill your arms open, find yourself briefly in warrior two, immediately bend your right elbow, lower your right forearm, on top of your right thigh. Inhale, lift your top arm up, opening your chest up to the side of the room, rooting into your back foot, that's part of your foundation. And then exhale, bend your top elbow, float your top arm back and around, grab on to your inner right thigh. This is Parsvo Konasana with a chest opener. Couple more cycles of breath. Straighten that back leg. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. Inhale, release your hand from your inner thigh. Float your top arm up, and then top hand comes down, frame your front foot, pick up your left heel, step your left foot forward to meet your right foot, and find yourself in Uttanasana. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up, and exhale, arms float down, Tadasana. Second side. Inhale, step your right leg back, angle your right foot in about 45 degrees, heel toe your left foot in towards the center of your mat so that your left heel is aligned with the arch of your back foot, hands on your hips, and then inhale, bend into your left knee, Lower your left thigh towards parallel with the ground, and then windmill your arms open, briefly in warrior two, and then immediately bend your left elbow, lower your left forearm onto your left thigh, float your top arm up, open your chest up, and then bend your top elbow, lower your back hand around, Grab onto your inner left thigh with your right hand. And you're in this modified Parsvo Konasana with a chest opener. This is a variation of side angle pose. Couple cycles of breath. Draw your left hip back. One more cycle of breath. With your next inhale, release your hand from your inner thigh, float your top hand up, and then lower both of your hands, frame your front foot, lift your right heel up, step your right foot to the top of the mat to meet your left foot. You're in forward fold, Uttanasana, root into your feet, inhale, rise up, arms up, and exhale, arms come down. 
Step your feet together, hands on your hips. We're going to move, move from Parsvo Konasana to Parsvo Tonasana. Inhale again, step your left leg back. With your hands on your hips, rotate your hips towards the top of the mat. This time you want your heels aligned with each other or wider. And then inhale, interlace your fingers behind your back. Start with a bend in your elbows. And as you exhale, start to lower your chest over your right thigh. And then once your chest is lowered, that's when you straighten your arms and float your knuckles up towards the ceiling. Another big chest opener. Take a few cycles of breath. And in thinking about the ways in which we might resist this soul trait of loving kindness, Judaism offers a few examples. One of the top ways that you can practice chesed is in visiting the sick. And think for a moment about all of the, the reasons that hold you back from visiting someone who's sick. I don't wanna be an inconvenience. It's far to schlep to the hospital. Oh yeah, I don't know if I have time to make the phone call. What do I write on a card? Inhale, lift your torso up. Release the interlace of your hands. Hands float back to your hips and step your back foot forward. How do we push through that resistance and stop making excuses and figure out how to show up for someone who's sick? That's one example in Judaism. Inhale, step your right foot back with your hands on your hips, rotate your hips towards the front of the room. Inhale, lift your heart and chest up, interlace your fingers behind your back, start with a bend in your elbow, Remember, you want heel to heel alignment and hinge at your hips, lower your chest over your left leg, straighten your arms, float your knuckles up towards the ceiling. A second example in Judaism, another top way to perform chesed is to visit the bereaved or comfort the bereaved. And same thing, it's so easy to get stuck in the sense of, I don't know what to say or what the person needs, or do I have enough time to make a shiva call, even on Zoom? And it's on us to remove the obstacles that stand in our way of expressing this soul trait. And just like we might be resistant to coming into Parsvo Tonasana or stepping onto our yoga mat, I'm tired, I don't have time. What, do you, what changes do you need to make to remove these barriers? Inhale, lift your chest up, crown of your head floats up towards the ceiling, release the interlace of your fingers, Hands float to your hips and step your back foot forward. Great job, Parsvo Tonasana. Inhale, arms float up. Exhale, folding forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward, bend your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale, step your right leg back. Step your left leg to meet it. Find yourself in plank position. Bend your elbows, lower halfway down. Roll over your toes. Press your palms into the ground. Come up into Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, upward facing dog. It's a huge chest opener. And take a modification if you need to. If this is too hard on your wrists, 
Lower your knees down. Feel how the pressure comes back off the wrists. So you're still engaging. And then widen your knees, bring your big toes to touch, shift your hips back onto your heels, lower your forearms down onto the ground, lower your forehead onto the ground. Balasana, child's pose. Pause for just a moment. And then come up onto your knees. If your knees are sensitive, take your pillow, a blanket, or fold your mat in half to create more padding underneath your knees. And let's come into Ustrasana, into camel position. So I'm going to start by offering a modification. You can bend your elbows. Press your palms into your lower back with your fingertips pointing down. Inhale, lift your chest and heart up. And as you press your palms into your lower back, just above your tush, bend your upper back, let your head drop down. And that's the most modified version of Ustrasana Camel Pose. Inhale, lift your heart and chest up and release your hands. So that's version number one. Let's, let's try each of these together or stopping where you hit that threshold of pain. Modification two is to tuck your toes and lift your heels up. With your arms straight, float them back. Inhale, lift your heart and chest up. And as you exhale, bend your upper back, float your fingertips onto your heels. Press your thighs forward and remember all that time spent rotating your thighs in and back. That's what you want to do. Rotate your thighs in and back. And exhale, come on up. And the traditional version of Ustrasana of Camel Pose, untuck your toes which means your heels lower further down. And just like before, arms float back, lift your chest and heart up, press your thighs and hips forward. As you start to bend in your upper back, float your fingers down onto your heels while you simultaneously press your thighs forward, rotate your inner thighs towards the back of the room. Take two cycles of breath. And if you're in one of the modifications, that is cool. You're still engaging in this extraordinary chest opener. And then inhale to lift up. Bring your big toes to touch. Sit your hips onto your heels and pause. Great job. You have done so much work to work up to our peak pose for today, which is Satu Bandha Sarvangasana. And for some of us, we might move into Urdhva Dhanurasana. So we're going to start in a bridge pose. And if you are feeling flexible and energized enough to take an upward facing wheel pose, that will be an option. So a lot of, lot of different versions for each yogi in the room. Come to sit on your tush, bend your knees, have a block handy in case you'd like the most restorative version of bridge pose. Arms come out in front of you, and as you exhale, start to lower down onto your back, one vertebra at a time. Arms float down alongside your torso, walk your feet in, until they brush against the tips of your fingers. That's how close you want your heels to your tush. And let's start with everybody taking a similar version of Setu Bandha Sarvangasana bridge pose. 
With your hands, grab on to the outer part of your mat and pull the mat apart. Inhale to lift your hips up. And remember, this is a question. Have you been paying attention? The rotation of your thighs, what are you gonna do with them? How are you gonna spin them? Spin them down, in and down. Puff your chest up, pull your mat apart, and exhale, lower down. Great job. So from here, let me immediately offer the restorative version of Setu Bandha Sarvangasana. You can take your block or book, press into your feet, lift your hips up, slide the block underneath your hips on the high height or the medium height. And this is how you will come into the pose. This is the restorative version of bridge pose. That's option number one. Option number two, even if you're taking upward facing wheel, Urdhva Dhanurasana, I'd like you to start by coming into this. It's a good on-ramp to the most intense version of the pose. Press your feet into the ground, lift your hips up, tuck your shoulders underneath your torso, interlace your fingers, energetically reach your knuckles forward, reach your knees forward, and rotate your inner thighs in and down. You're in Satu Banda Sarvangasana, bridge pose. You can stay there for five to 10 breaths. If you'd like to move on and try Urdhva Dhanurasana, lower down, lift your arms up towards the ceiling, bend your elbows, lower your hands down onto the mat, press your palms onto the mat, your fingertips are facing towards the front of the room. Draw your elbows in towards each other. Inhale and exhale. Inhale. And then come on to the top of your head. And inhale again. And as you exhale, press your palms into the mat. Straighten your arms, press your knees towards the front of the room, and you're in Urdhva Dhanurasana, upward facing wheel. Few cycles of breath. And then lower your chin to your chest, lower your head down. And everyone, widen your feet to either edge of the mat and let your knees knock in to each other. This is constructive rest. Great thing to do after an intense chest opener. You can have one hand on your belly, one on your chest. Take a couple cycles of breath. And then knees float back up towards the ceiling. Your feet are planted on the ground. Let's do one more pose. Let's open up our hips. Inhale, draw your right knee into your chest. Stack your right ankle on top of your left knee. Inhale, draw your left thigh into your chest. Interlace your fingers either around your left thigh or for a more intense version of the stretch around your left shin. Right elbow presses into your right thigh as you simultaneously draw your left knee into your chest. And it's that, it's those two actions combined that open up your hip. So you're pressing your right thigh forward as you draw your left knee in. 
feel how those counteractions open up your hip. Take one more inhale. Exhale, release the interlace of your fingers. Lower your left foot down and remove your right ankle from your left knee, right foot on the ground. Second side, stack your left ankle on top of your right knee. Interlace your fingers around your right thigh or your right shin. Draw your right knee into your chest while you'll simultaneously press your left thigh forward with your left elbow. Three cycles of breath. Release the interlace of your fingers, right foot floats down. Remove your left ankle from your right knee and then float your shins up, straighten your arms. Arms come inside your legs and your hands grip onto your outer feet. Happy baby. And as we start to wind down, Going to return to this idea of chesed, of loving kindness, opening up our hearts, pushing ourselves sometimes in the opposite direction than is convenient to truly show up and be present and helpful and kind and generous and action oriented towards other people. I just so appreciate this notion that loving kindness, true loving kindness, is not just an emotion and a disposition. It's how we show up in action, in social support, emotional support for those in need without any expectation of return. Release your hands, extend your legs out forward. Let your ankles roll open, arms alongside your torso, palms facing up. Settling into your Shavasana, your final resting pose. Start to wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes, bringing a little bit of life and energy back into your body. Draw your knees into your chest, roll over onto the right side of your torso, pause. And press your palms into the ground and push yourself up into a seated position. Hands on top of your knees, palms facing up. Let your eyes close. And we close with the Reminder that I offer each, almost each week that we practice, that the real value in doing this work on the mat and turning our gaze in and practicing self care is to pave the way to be outward facing and extend 
the same level of care to others in our lives. So I want to repeat the opening meditation, but this time I want you to imagine that someone in your life is right beside you. It might be somebody who you love, who's part of your family, who's one of your dearest friends. It might be someone that you know peripherally. It might even be somebody with whom you don't get along, who you are most resistant to. And either out loud in the comfort of your own yoga studio or just in your head, please repeat the opening meditation, but this time, instead of saying, may I be filled with loving kindness, may I be safe, insert the name of the person that you have in mind. May blank be filled with loving kindness. May they be safe. May they be peaceful and at ease. May they be happy. And press your palms together in the center of your chest and set an intention. What is one action that you can take on to show up for that other person, to extend your heart, your chesed, your metta out into the world? Set that as your intention, lower your chin to your chest. Namaste, Shabbat Shalom. Thank you as always.